Hello, my name is German Eichberger. I'm the co-PTL of Octavia, which is the new OpenStack load balancer. And uh, it's supposed to be operator grade. It means it supposed to be scalable, reliable, all those things. And this is the first look of the alpha version of it. And what is Octavia? Basically, we actually made it the reference implementation for the Albas V2, which came out with Liberty. So our goals now are uh, basically, you want a feature parity with the existing reference driver. That's what Octavia will provide. We are replacing the current reference driver. We will become the official OpenStack uh, reference driver for load balancing, which, which is huge for us. And we are using virtual machines to kind of do the load balancing. So we have basically service VMs, and we are working on integrating with servi service VM frameworks like Akandas, Rug, or I don't know if you do Tagger or not, but that's also possible. And another thing we're planning is spare pools failover. I said, supposed to be reliable. So when something breaks, we got to do something. And we're also hoping uh, further down the road to have uh, active standby set up, where we talk to two VMs with VRP, and then bring the one up, which is, and grab the, one, grab the IP from the one which is broken. And we're hoping for a highly available control plane so people can constantly create and destroy load balancers. And then further down the road, we are thinking even on a horizontal scale out so we can, uh, so we can load balance as much as you want, which will be awesome. OK, there's the component design. And, uh, and basically, the, we use a lot of third party things, and we are trying to add even more. Uh, but, but what's going to happen is, so, so at the most basic, we are integrating with the Elbas v2 system with an Octavia driver. And so all the commands you're used to controlling your A10 load balancer or Netscale or whatever, you can use with Octavia. And then once you do that, you, and this driver talks to a REST API we call the operator API. Right now it's internal because only the driver talks to it, but we are hoping to kind of spinning that out into a real operator API that they can then manage and control their other load balancers. And then, it, and then we have a bunch of things. A queue consumer uh, listens to the operator API and then executes the commands. We have a networking driver to plug the network. We have a housekeeping manager to clean up uh, broken VMs which die. We have a health manager to manage the health of everything. We have a compute driver to do the Nova work to spin up a VM, or we call it an M4 because it has to be a container. So we don't want to be tied to VM container. Um, if there's something new, we might even do that. Ironic, who knows? Whatever is possible. M4 encompasses everything. And then and we have the M4 driver, which basically does the work on, on the M4. Spins up right now HA proxy, but could be Engine X or whatever other load balancer and we have a database. And the M4 is in the picture is basically two-legged. Uh, it talks about a control network, which we call the load balancer network, which is our management network. And then it's an attendant network, and potentially some installations could have a, a, a public internet network where the, where the VIPs live or whatever. So that's very, very flexible. So what I want to focus on, we had on Monday we had a talk where Michael was talking about the SSH driver doing the the talking from the M4 uh, to the controller and vice versa. And SSH driver that uses Paramigo to SSH into each M4 and execute commands. And uh, the key, the use SSH key is the one which they submit when, when booting the, the VM. And that was demoed in the in a Monday session. And I think that's not as secure as it could be. So that's why we have the agent REST server, which also comes with a REST driver. So, so what's happening there is we we, we have a disk image creator, and so it packs in the M4 agent. And the spool image has this agent in it. It will start up automatically. And then uh, via the config drive, the, the agent gets its own SSL certificate. And it's signed by the, by the same CA for all the M4 we are controlling with this thing. And it has the unique M4 ID as the uh, common name. So when we talk to it, we can see, OK, this is, this is really the M4 we're thinking it is. So we, by looking at this here. And we also su su submit the certificate of authority of the client certificate. So the M4 can verify this is actually an authorized controller talking to me, not some hick somewhere. And so, and so this ensures some sort of two-way authentication when we talk to it, which we think is much better than SSH, since we can ensure everything's perfect. And there's also an agent API we have 
there's a link for the specification. Okay, uh, you can try it with REST yourself. There's a REST patch, you just need to find it somewhere and then put it in there, and then the thing will install it automatically in DevStack. So Enable Plugin Octavia pulls this thing, and this REST patch has stuff to generate certificates, put them somewhere, and everything. And you need to check if actually your REST driver got enabled. The patch should do it, but maybe not later versions. And there's an operator API. You can go directly, or you can use the uh, Octavia plugin. And there's an API documentation. Uh, let's see if we can get to the demo. Uh, actually not. I don't let's see if we can play the demo. I don't know. So let's see. Uh, no, we need to make that big again. Uh, does it? No. How do I make that? Click on the speaker while you're in. I click on the speaker. Yeah. See if I. Oh. That is it. Okay, here we see we use the commands to create a load balancer. Load balancer create. Then we create a listener. It's very. Uh, then we create a pool. And I couldn't figure, and I couldn't make my thing make basically uh, VMs to load balance. So we are so basically taking now this uh, VIP address and just curling to it. And since we don't have any members behind, just gives back a 503 from the load balancer, so that, that works. Service unenable, so that all happened with the REST driver. And now the good thing about the REST driver is we have some diagnostic things we can do. For instance, we can look up uh, information on the M4. So that's why I'm copying the M4 IP. You see I misspelled curl, but now it should work. And you see we have the HAPREX version 153. It measures, figures that out. See the API version, even the M4 ID. And you can do even more fun things. You can figure out the listeners. And see, there's one listener, which is even active. And then let's see if we can get more of this listener. And, and there it is. You know, front end is down since there are no members. So, so everything's happening. And, and people can use curl and interrogate an M4 for debugging. You also see when you look at the curl command, you have to give it uh, the certificate, the client certificate, otherwise the thing would reject you. And you also have to say it's insecure because you're not validating <laughs> against the other thing. So pretty nice. Okay, so, so it's a lot, that's basically our last slide. And we're always looking for contributors. So we, so we want to be the biggest load balancing thing in the world. So we need lots more, <laughs> lots more people to be that. And here's some pointers for information. We have a wiki. We, we have an Oc Octave.io is where we put all the documentation and our specs and stuff. We have a launch pad where I can file bugs if you find some. I'm pretty sure there are many. And we also have, right now we are on GitHub, uh, actually, yeah, Octavia, but we are hoping to, we are Stackforge Octavia. And what we are changing is we will become OpenStack Octavia. It's already approved, but we didn't do it before the summit, so we didn't get distracted anymore. And basically, this was OpenStack Octavia. Thank you for listening and everything. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>